uh, air quality management uh, lecture series uh, 14. This lecture series is supported by GCRF Clean Environment and Planetary Health in Asia. We call it as CEPA network. The Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Madras, Indian International Conference on Air Quality Management, IISAKM. And we have uh, several uh, CEPA network partners. We are, they are also supporting this lecture series. So we started this uh, lecture series uh, in uh, last year, October uh, 2020. Uh, this is one of its kind uh, in, in India where it provides an opportunity for young researchers, scientists, engineers, educators, and practitioners to learn the latest advancement in theories, technologies, and applications in the area of air quality management. So it also gives an opportunity for collaboration, stakeholder engagement, and various you know, uh, uh, opportunities for research and other uh, uh, collaborations. In the past, uh, we have the eminent speakers uh, across the globe. Uh, you know, in, uh, uh, from the October started with uh, uh, Dr. B. Sengupta, former member secretary, Central Pollution Control Board. And the last lecture was uh, given by uh, Professor Arun Kumar Sharma, director ICMR uh, Jodhpur. Now, today's lecture will be presented by uh, Dr. Rakesh Kumar, a well-known. Uh, you know, uh, scientist, engineer, and uh, uh, for, as a former director from National Environmental Engineering Research Institute, Nagpur. So now I'll request uh, uh, so, uh, Dr. Sorona, uh, Suvarna to introduce the speaker. Good afternoon all. It is my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Rakesh Kumar. He completed his PhD, his MTech in Environmental Science and Engineering from IIT Bombay and PhD in engineering from RTM Nagpur University. Before assuming the charge of director of the CSIR National Environmental Engineering Research Institute, he was chief scientist and head of CSIR Niri Nagpur Zonal Center. He has a vast experience in all fields of environmental science and engineering. He has received more than nine awards for his outstanding contribution in environmental science and engineering. He has also served as adjunct professor at Center for Environmental Science and Engineering, IIT Bombay. Dr. Dr. Rakesh Kumar has trained patent on pollution control devices, including two international patents. He also published more than 90 papers in national and international conferences and journals. Now I request Dr. Rakesh Kumar sir to deliver today's talk on are we doing enough in technology space for air pollution control? Thank you. Sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shwarna. Um, yes, sir, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, unshare the slides, uh, then I'll uh, that will allow you. To... Okay, right. Yeah, please, sir. Right. Thank you, Dr. Shiva and uh, whole team, which is uh, conducting these series. Uh, I have not got chance of all of them, all all the lectures, uh, which which you have already organized, but few of them that I attended, they have been uh, very very interesting. And I hope my lecture uh, comes somewhere close to that. So thank you again, and uh, let me share my slides and we'll start showing to you. Give me a minute. So my slides visible, I guess. Yes, sir. Some bandwidth problem is there, just we will wait. Ah, yes, sir.
sir if there is a, a you know issue then we can just email us that uh, presentation we will load it from here I think he is reconnecting. Okay. Shiva, could you see the slides which were there up? Uh, it got disconnected. Uh, yeah, here used to see, but there was it took a little time to load it. Uh, okay. If there is a uh, something, you can send it by email, sir. I will. Uh, we will change the slides from here. Yeah, I'll do that. But in the meantime, I'll try again uh, the sharing sure. and just confirm. Sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. coming, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. So this was the this this was the third slide. Yes, I think uh, yeah you can you can go to the uh, previous slide, sir. Okay. Yeah, you can start, sir. Maybe uh, because the big, big... you can start from the beginning, sir.
So can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, uh, we are sorry, just to uh, please cooperate us, we will uh, try to address it quickly. Um, he is having some bandwidth problem at the, his place. Dheeraj, uh, uh, Professor Bell is uh, facing some problem. Can you just uh, look at it and address it? Okay, sir. I'm doing so. Ma Margaret Bell. the uh, presentation what you is happening is it seems uh, so i am getting um, muted by some design <laughs> so i okay so i'm not sure whether you all were able to hear me as well as see the slides now we can able to hear you but not with the slides with slides are not visible now the yeah, slides i have just uh, removed it is unshared right now uh, okay sir you have you sent it to me that slide i will share from here yeah, I have already sent it to you and I'm okay. trying to share it again. Uh, okay, no problem. I'll uh, just immediately I'll open it. I was on slide four. Mm. Can you all see the slide? Was, was it visible? Yeah, it is visible. Swarup, so, can you just check in the SIPA website? I have not yet received uh, the file sent by uh, Rakesh sir. Can you just check in SIPA? Sir, uh, have you sent it to my uh, yes, Nagendra at the civil.iatm.ac.in? Sir, we received his presentation. Yeah, can you just uh, load it from any one of you? Yes, sir, just a minute. Yeah. You are just uh, sent. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Because that uh, IIT email, uh, if the uh, size is more than 10 MB, it won't uh, immediately come. Okay. Okay, sir. Now it is it's visible. Yeah, it's good. But is it visible? 
Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I'm sorry for all this uh, technical glitch we have faced. Uh, uh, we are uh, extremely, uh, uh, you know, uh, pleased to look forward to uh, uh, Dr. Rakesh sir's uh, presentation because he worked extensively on this air pollution related uh, uh, work. So over to you, sir. So I start all over again. Yes, sir, please. From beginning. Okay. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, the whole idea of this presentation was to look at uh, two different component of the presentation. One was to see how air quality related things were happening in our country. Uh, of course, one analysis were relating to relating to lockdown, which was uh, nature induced control. And also there are certain things which got done in our country over a period of time. So the whole presentation is in two parts. So this is uh, the slide that I was on. So when we look at some of these cases, in, which is very common for all over the world, we are talking about in India, it happens, but it happens everywhere. But in our country, uh, particularly, we do have unaccounted sources, which are not well understood, and we probably do not have proper inventory as well. And therefore, many times when we have uh, air quality management plan, we are unable to address each and every component of the, the air quality, which is, which is being experienced. By. So when we're looking at our problem, uh, starting from urban now we have city scale issues. There are areas like indo gangetic plain, which is becoming a big hotspots for us. And of course, overall, when we see number of cities, uh, which have been uh, now rated as polluted cities are going up uh, almost every year. So uh, earlier we had 100, uh, after that became 122. Now we have exceeded 130 or so. Can we go to next slide? Yeah, here. So when we look at uh, all of these sources together, uh, each one of them have their own challenges, and I'll discuss with each one of them separately uh, as we go ahead in presentation. But the one which are important here to understand is that earlier uh, in many cities, our uh, Indian cities were actually industrial cities, and therefore a lot of industries were in, inside the town, and therefore industries were the ones which were blamed all the time for the pollution. But when we do analysis now, Many of these industries have moved out or have been asked to move out for, for some judicial uh, intervention or for any other purposes. The, the major sources are coming out to be local and very distributed. So therefore, it is very, very difficult to uh, understand that how things are moving, particularly in case of open biomass burning, uh, DG sets, construction dust related issues and related things. On the other side, when we look at uh, agriculture burning, that is in a rural area, uh, but in very specific area and very short term, but it, it actually increases in the in the areas as well as during the period, which becomes very, very critical for us. So therefore, it's very important that when we start looking all of these things together, how many of them we will be able to control using technology and how many of them we can possibly do some kind of management and therefore we can manage. Can we go to next? So one analysis which was done by uh, our colleagues uh, when uh, I was in uh, Neri, Dr. Sunil Gulia and his team, along with us, we, we tried to look at uh, 46 cities pan India for uh, understanding what happened, which was possibly, I would say, nature-driven nature, nature -driven, uh, control technology processes, in which we tried to look at how reduction had happened, because the first period, which, which was the lockdown, was very, very uh, severe, and in fact, almost all activities were at standstill. What came out very clearly was that in different regions of India, we had dif different reduction of PM2.5. So, for example, PM 2.5 concentration reduced about 34 percent in in case of North India, 17 in East, 1.7 percent increased in center, 
31 percent reduced in west and south and uh, 26 percent in south zone so what actually basically tells us that it was not complete reduction the way we thought will be leading to much more cleaner places so overall when we did analysis for cities and their sizes so in a small city reductions were about 23 percent medium size in the city 16 large and mega cities were 32 and 28 percent Overall reduction in NOx were dissimilar to PM 2.5. It also indicates that these were not coming from the same sources. So it's not, so PM 2.5 and NOx, since they were dissimilar, they cannot be assumed to be coming because of the combustion sources. And therefore, uh, this, this whole analysis of understanding that uh, we, we had the benefit of uh, lockdown, uh, it was not homogeneous across the country. Uh, that we thought of. Can we go to next? So when you look at this slide, which which is slightly busy slide, uh, it tells you about all these 40, 46 cities. Uh, primarily, it, uh, it tries to give you these ideas about the cities on the west, uh, on the on the north side, center side, eastern, and and the south side. Uh, overall, if you can see, a uh, PM 2.5 decline has been seen, which was which was which I just pointed it out earlier. So in eastern zone, the reduction were mainly except one place about 33 percent. Other way, it was in the range of about five to ten percent. Central zone between eight to nine percent, but average there was increase also in central zone. Western zone, it was consistent about uh, 15 to 20 percent reduction. And in South June, uh, in Wanak is 40%, but otherwise it was 10 to 15%. So what it actually shows us that when we are moving in, in this, this particular uh, condition, the reductions were not as expected. Next. So a finer analysis, which was done for, uh, for some areas of uh, Haryana, Punjab, and uh, and it, when we compare with Nagpur, Mumbai, and some part of Trivandrum as well, what we found was that the average background concentration were in the range of about 25 to 67 percent of national standards of PM 2.5, and 8 percent to 60 percent of NOx. What it actually tells us is that our background concentration needs to be considered very strongly when we are reviewing our new standards. So there is a committee in uh, India which is trying to look at our standards all over again. And if it is looking at these, uh, it is actually a godsend information which is available now that our background concentration needs to be seriously looked at, which we were earlier neglecting it. Even in current domain of debate, we don't find that we are discussing that so much. So uh, there was a second set of analysis which was done with respect to what we have done in last 17 years uh, in terms of uh, interventions of various kinds. And we took a case of Delhi, but it is also applicable across India, most of them. So the study period which was taken to compare it was starting from 2003 to 2019. And uh, specifically, one looked at uh, long-term pollution data of three sites in Delhi, and then we compared it how things were. So these three sites were Chandni Chowk, Sarojini Nagar, and Narayana. Next. So what, what comes out from this analysis is that RSPM, which we call the respirable suspended particulate matter, uh, in some cases we used to compare this with PM10, uh, but many of us who have worked in this space uh, in 2003, we were still using the terminology of RSPM and therefore uh, we, we will go with that terminology and then try to look at this data. So a, a RSPM showed annual average increment between about 1% to 3.19% and this increment was more at industrial site compared to residential and commercial areas. SO2 showed annual reduction from 1.5% to about 4%. NO2 increased annually at the rate of about 5 to 6%. And when we look at uh, all of these annual averages of RSPM and NO2, we found the specified standards were anyway exceeded most of the time. Next. 
So similarly, when it was compared month month wise. Uh, it, it is very clear when we look at all of these 2003 to 2019 data, uh, the real increase of RSPM in, and sometimes when we compare this, we say that is PM10, uh, but it was basically becoming maximum during June and July month, which is just before the monsoon in many cases. So if we consider stubble burning as the main contributor for air pollution in Delhi, uh, which has been reported many times, the maximum increment should have been in the month of October, November months, instead of August and March, which is which is in some other cases, as you can see in this uh, slide as well. Next. So when we look at this data for NO2, NO2 is gradually increased uh, with annual average of 5 to 6 percent at all three sites in this uh, 15, 16 years. Uh, the sale of CNG has increased from 3.76 million metric standard cubic meter from 1999 to 1055 by 2017. So that's the kind of increase that we have seen in CNG sale. The total number of CNG fueled vehicles increased from 2600 to 1.02 million in the year 2017. And therefore, when you look at this data, that NO2 concentration and increase in CNG vehicles uh, shows very good correlation. And, and that's the reason for NO2 increase, which is happening on a continuous basis. So there were many control technologies and strategies which were introduced from 1980, and I would say most of them from 1990s onwards. And uh, when we try to compare and, and correlate with them, we find that uh, uh, there are certain things which are happening and which are very interesting set of data which appears. So reduction in the increasing trend of NO2 and RSPM was noticed after 2015, as you'll see in the chart on the right hand side. So therefore, there is a need to develop a systematic mechanism to monitor and assist the improvement in air quality for each of the pollutants separately. And for each of the pollutants, we should look at controlled strategies in a specific manner, not in a gross manner. So if you see the chart here, NO2 in, increased by 91%, right? And RSPM increased by 20% and SO2 decreased by 40% during the period of 2016 to 19, compared to period of 2003 to 2005. So this period was the slowest period. This is the period where a lot of activities happened. And as we'll see, as we uh, go ahead, we'll see what are the interventions which are done. Next. So let's look at what policy interventions happen in Delhi city and many of these happen across the country. Since the analysis has been done for Delhi, it is, uh, it is easy to correlate. So major focus of all these policy interventions were on vehicles. Uh, there are very limited technology related things which were done for industries and road dust and fugitive emissions. And similarly, uh, some, some activities were considered in the banned activities. So, for example, entry of certain kind of vehicles were banned in the city. Uh, there were deregistration of old vehicles which were done. And although there was a banning of biomass, but it was very limited uh, in, in that sense. And there was a huge work which got done in terms of fuel improvement. So complete late free petrol came in, sulfur reduction happened in a very drastic way, starting from 1000 ppm to about 10 ppm uh, ppb. Uh, so that's the kind of number that worked out. So if you look at before 2005, uh, we had this hydrocarbon norms of petrol came in, uh, setting up limits for idle CO and hydrocarbon for four wheelers came in, sulfur content reduction happened in diesel, CNG vehicle got introduced, phasing out of industry from Delhi periphery happened. And therefore, all these parameters were the ones which got impacted. After 2006 to 2010 period, we saw PUC system coming in for other parameters. We got new standards, uh, a national ambient air quality standard, and Bharat stage four uh, fuel got introduced and, and vehicle technology also got introduced, national capital region. Uh, NGT uh, started functioning as a judicial body to, to, to look at any cases of emissions and related things. And there were strict emission norms which are enforced in industries for furnace, boilers, and captive power plants. 
and as i said uh, sulfur reduction in diesel continued over a period of time and it continued even during this period 2011 to 15 period was when a ban of heavy vehicles in delhi was introduced open solid waste burning was uh, banned a registration of diesel vehicles having uh, engine capacity of more than 2000 cc uh, was also banned during this period 2016 to 19 period saw introduction of few uh, novel ideas such as odd even uh, scheme ban of 10 years old diesel vehicles and 15 years petrol vehicles uh, graded response action plan was introduced ban on pet coke happened and furnace oil which has very high sulfur that was introduced uh, introduction of bs6 happened of course it is almost at the end of i would say this period and uh, they started operating eastern and western expressway which will which was taking major part of the uh, heavy vehicle traffic outside of the city from this and in uh, of course national clean air program got introduced and some other work got done, something like zigzag technology and brick kilns and introduction green crackers. But some of these were at much later date, so that's that's not actually captured in the data. Next. So so when you look at all of that, which, which we read from previous slides, it is actually very clear that this, there was a lot of control related activities which were happening. It's not that nothing was happening over a period of time. So if I have to take a uh, dated data, in 74, we had Pollution Control Board. In 81, we got CPCB and Air Act got uh, passed. In 86, we got the Comprehensive uh, Environmental Protection Act. In 1994, we got National Ambient Air Quality Standards. And in 98, we had IPCA and uh, IPCA, which got uh, Control Authority, Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority established for the national capital region. And uh, then we got new revised standards. 2014, we got introduction of National Air Quality Index. And in 2016, we got GRAP, which I just now talked about. And then 2018, we got National Clean Air Program and the whole lot of uh, activities with regard to identifying which cities, which cities are in non-attainment and what we need to do. And, and things are moving in that direction. So right now, when we, we are talking, uh, we are in the phase of introduction of National Clean Air Program, and there are a whole lot of things which have been planned, and let's see how it expands out for all of us next. So I will now shift to uh, control strategies, what more can happen and could have happened, uh, besides all, all that what has happened. So when we're talking about a uh, whole area, why we didn't see as much benefit as we could have, uh, looks like when we when we list it, I have done a minor listing. If you do detailed listing, probably much more, much more controlled things were done. However, uh, we didn't see that kind of benefit which we expected. And the reason was that we were talking about uh, certain things which were not accounted for, which were not understood, and and for each of these, many times they were not even counted. So, for example, biomass, where it burns, how it burns, who does, not much of idea. Uh, control in crematoria, uh, I'll show you some numbers for Delhi and NCR. Uh, that's very daunting. Transportation sector in a smaller way, uh, for a smaller areas, were not addressed. For the larger area, yes. Construction was uh, construction related activity was mainly addressed in terms of banning it or letting it happen, but not in terms of what the controls would happen. Similarly, for tandoors and stoves, which this, these are large numbers in our Indian cities, uh, not much uh, uh, happened in this area. And of course, we saw some industry related activity happening, but on this suspension again, I said not much has been done. So when we are wanting to do something good in each of these cities, we will have to do all of these things together, not part of them, and report each control for each sector with implementation and monitoring and reporting to public. So we have done enough uh, for doing part of it, but not completely. And we should in initiate regional dialogues for all the successes, whatever we have got, and wherever we have faced challenges, those should be, again, discussed in public, not defended in public, saying that we did enough. Next. So I'll show you some examples. 
So a um, a couple of years back so when we are talking about road resuspension related things particularly for construction even today the road dust and construction related dust is very very high in ncr and it accounts in most of the cities between 20 to 50% of pm10 and when we look at these things uh, we we find that what why is that such a small thing we are unable to do it of course we are wanting to do water uh, water is scarce in the cities and therefore one has to look at something else. So in this case, there was a pilot study which was taken up where certain kind of chemical was used, which is hygroscopic and sprayed them. And it was found that it was effective for almost six to eight hours. So it redu reduces your water requirement by almost one fifth and it still uh, gets that benefit that is required. Next. Similarly, when we look at crematoria, and uh, in 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 Delhi there are 59 crematoriums, and uh, there are few of them which are which are uh, electrical, and there are few others. So probably five percent of them are electrical and CNG type, but rest of them are actually wood-based open crematoria. And you'll be uh, surprised that only one crematorium, Nigam Bodh Ghat, has 30 platforms and about 20,000 bodies are cremated in, in, in one year. And last year, of course, it was extraordinarily high. So if you look at these numbers in a local area, uh, when for each of them, we burn about 300, 400 kg, right? And we, we get about 0 0.2 to 0.5% of total PM 2.5. And in the area of which, which we measured uh, within about 300 to 500 meters, these are distinctly noticeable increase in PM 2.5 in that area. So we need to look at these and these are these are technology which can be very easily implemented. We have uh, recently demonstrated one, we called it green crematoria. And uh, I hope they multiply as fast as possible. Next. The other one, which is uh, a bit controversial subject but something which we should not uh, put aside uh, traditional cooking and it has been found that most of our cities although this this data looks like traditional cooking in villages but most of our cities like delhi mumbai you name it actually it comprises of a lot of uh, village areas i call it village area or village like areas where uh, people from low income group they stay and although they are they are being called urban dwellers but they are actually using all the techniques which are used in rural area. The major difference is that they cannot possibly have open spaces that you have in villages. Here in this case, in a very tiny space, very, very, very constricted space, they burn. And this pr program of Pradhan Mantri Uzila Yojana, where uh, LPG connections were given uh, to poor women, it has benefited a lot of people. However, due to the higher cost, uh, they are unable to refill in many of these cases. So when we talk about uh, uh, such numbers like 2.9 billion people, depending upon burning traditional fuel like firewood, uh, we need to worry about how each one of them get it. The second very important part of uh, this whole thing is that if we can't get the clean fuel quickly, at least we can differently improve the ventilation in kitchen. And that's something which is much more easier to do. So uh, all of these places uh, needs intervention from people who understand ventilation and also in some cases uh, how, how the chimney is to be designed in a cost effective manner. So if it costs anything between 2000 to 5000 is fine at the moment, we go into 20, 25,000 in lakh rupees. No one would do it. And that's where the challenge of uh, community of air pollution experts is that how do we do intervention in each of this? areas. Next. Just to share a, a few numbers, Delhi has approximately about 35,000 tandoors and each tandoor typically uh, uses about uh, 300 kg of wood or wood like material. So uh, these are these are some numbers or some sources which are not even accounted for in a traditional system of emission inventory and control. So when we when we did the survey, we found that these tandoors are are uh, traditionally designed 
and uh, many of them are not even repaired. There is no chimney or there is no control systems in places. So we have been able to do some improved conceptual design and one or two places it has been demonstrated, but it needs government intervention in terms of its adoption. Either it is in terms of subsidy or in terms of um, providing these designs to multiple people so that they can multiply it faster. Otherwise, uh, we may control vehicles too much, but if you don't control all these cooking, tandoors, roadside dhaba, uh, crematorium, we will still have local air pollution, which is much more higher. Next. The another set of control systems that we uh, deployed uh, in last couple of years, we call it Vayu, uh, which is which is not to clean up the whole city. Uh, many people have, uh, you know, counted it, saying that it is not. It is it, how how is it that it will clean the whole city? And I tell you, it will not. Uh, why was actually developed for for the hotspot uh, at traffic junction in many cases uh, we have pollutant concentration which are almost in any anywhere between three to twenty times of of the normal ambient air quality. So if we can if we can reduce that part of it because our traffic congestion is not something which we can wish away, uh, there are chances that we will give the local benefit. So that's another set of technology which was developed and demonstrated. And in recent times in India. Next. There's another uh, set of work that is again piloted, but we need to look at how do we multiply and scale it up. The problem in our country also has been how do we scale it up? So it is basically a, a kind of artificial tree and it actually generates very fine mist of water, uh, which actually increases the moisture content nearby areas. The effective Effective radius is about 300 meters or so, and 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 therefore the dust particles uh, will settle as as the moisture content in atmosphere increases. So here the idea was that you can bring in treated wastewater, which is coming, of course, disinfected and clean, and then use them at many places where uh, you can over a period of time, particularly in peak period, it can be operated, which will also not only look good. Uh, it will uh, do separation of dust and all the plants which are which you see on the on the pillar here are actually also air pollution reduction plants they they naturally also clean air that can also be done and uh, what we have also noticed that locally it reduces temperature to about 2 to 7 degree uh, centigrade particularly in summer time it can be very very useful next one When we look at transport sector, which is one of the most complex sector, right? So, uh, of course, we have done enough for fuel quality. We have done enough for uh, control technology of engines, uh, but we haven't really done many other things which are important. So, for, for example, when we talk about maintenance, road conditions, adulteration of fuel, traffic management, and, and, and uh, some kind of uh, urban canyon effect when we have high rises on both sides of the road, uh, we need to do something differently. And, and that is where we need to bring in some new ideas that can we think of retrofitting older vehicles with new catalytic converter or diesel particulate filter? Uh, can we think of all the older vehicles to set up EGRs? Uh, can we do some engine modification or engine retrofitment? Because right now, whenever we discuss, we, 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 we are told that we have already introduced BS6 vehicles, but BS6 vehicles are still not even 1% of the total population of vehicles. So we still have BS2, BS3, BS4 vehicles on road. So we need to bring in all the retrofitment options uh, in place uh, for getting benefit of next 10, 10 to 20 years. So in including uh, you know, EV, electric vehicle and related things. Alternative fuels, we have already discussed quite a bit, and uh, there is a lot of push for electric vehicles right now. Uh, but I'm sure uh, electric vehicles will not be applicable and, and operable for all kinds of vehicles, particularly when we talk about goods vehicles. And, and uh, there are plenty of them uh, which are still struggling to find out the options for that. What we need to do more uh, is on the policy front where public transport system is supported more and more with giving 
power to have uh, lower tariff uh, transporting one place to another in easy person and traffic planning and management is something which is which is still uh, i would say at a primitive stage something is done but it needs to be taking the overall overall for the whole city of it uh, so there are a lot of uh, options which can be examine taxes and fuels and vehicles emission norms uh, for example replacement of two stroke engines have happened but uh, we still have non farm two stroke engines uh, all over the place which are still operated fuel adulteration is a big thing whether we can use financial uh, tools or uh, we can do some some kind of policing to do fuel adulteration issue uh, and and uh, some new standards making which are smarter in standard making which will make people adhere to the law. Next one. The one which gets discussed quite a bit uh, uh, is on this double burning and related things. We know uh, that a lot of work is being done, but there has there has been some some group of people in India who are talking about can we not create some great green wall of Aravli, which will have 16, which will be about 1,600 kilometer long uh, length and five kilometer wide, so that the stubble burning, if at all it is traveling, will be will be stopped in the middle, and use some of the other control technology in, in this case. Next, of course, uh, use of renewable fuels in this. So, so I'll not discuss it here as part of our climate change uh, negotiation on this. But it's very important. The moment we have all of these. Uh, we will have less and less uh, emissions in our cities. Next, the tree plantation, which is which has been uh, noticed, uh, is also something which is which is being not captured in our control technology processes. So the one 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 side normally we are talking about carbon sequestration, but how much of uh, real emissions combustion emission? Uh, is being captured or removed by trees or shrubs is something which is not yet uh, accounted for. And that is something which will be important to include in our design of pavement and the road roadside construction, uh, which will reduce the dust as well when it happens. Next. This previous one. Next after this. Yeah, sorry. So when 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 I was trying to summarize here uh, that we have to have sector specific cleaner technology which gets implemented. So when we when we are talking about large coal based industries, we have to have a certain kind of technology which are in place, but they are mostly for bigger power plant, bigger units, not for smaller ones. Similarly, for small scale industries, uh, we we haven't done enough of research. Uh, probably we know how how to do it, but we do not know how to implement them at a scale. So we have large number of brick kilns, pulp and paper mill, uh, pyrolysis processes based industries, ceramic industry, textile industries. So all of these need uh, very small scale intervention. The the conventional interventions when they are suggested, they actually sometimes cost more than the unit itself, and that is where all the environmental engineers and all engineers and scientists need to work together to bring that cost effectiveness of bringing the technology. Uh, the moment we highlight that these set of small scale industries are polluting, uh, many times uh, it has happened that the local court or Supreme Court or in NGT, they ask them to get shifted or they ask them to be closed. What from the air pollution point of view, it looks good. But what happens is last set of people become unemployed in no time. And then you have social issues, we have crime issues, and you simply cannot wish away, uh, you know, certain skill sets, and you cannot possibly train them in a very short period of time. So it's very important that we, we start looking at air pollution control interventions, which are cost effective. Uh, vehicles, I will not say much, but yes, we need to talk about older vehicles and how do we improve them on road because uh, generally the manufacturers are not taking responsibility for the vehicles which are sold. And it is, it is the responsibility of the state and the people who own those vehicles. So we need to work more and more of it. Some of the pilots which have been done for retrofitting uh, the diesel vehicles in older buses, 
have actually worked out very well, about 30-40% reduction in expense. Uh, similarly, when we talk about domestic emission, cook stove technology, we have plenty of them, uh, but scaling is an issue and we need to do them very quickly. Similarly, high combustion efficient tandoors and open street dhaba must happen. If, if it cannot be done, then we need to shift them to LPG or clean fuel. While doing it, we will have to support them. We will have to do hand holding. Uh, on their own, they will not because the fuel that they're using is cheaper. And uh, the, the, anything which is not making economically efficient or economically uh, logical sense, people will not adopt it. Uh, this, this is, these are some measures which cannot be forced. These have to be held together and uh, we have to work with the community. And the last one, when we talk about the suspension of dust, um, is, is something which I'll show you in the next slide. So, next one. In dust resuspension, whatever we have done till date has been to use water. And most of the cities are struggling to have water. And therefore, one has to start looking at various other options. So you have other things which I showed one, one of the pilot which was done in Delhi and Mumbai and one more locations. One can start looking at whether we can use salts and brines, vitamin emulsions, surface activagens, lignosulfonates uh, or liquid polymers. Uh, there are other emulsions which have been used in many places and depending upon where we want to do, whether it's construction site or digging site or, uh, or transportation of material site, uh, it is important uh, that we look at all of these options in our country. There are a lot of machineries which can also be used, which are not being used or not even being discussed using dry fog and water sprays, industrial wind fences, a lot of places where we are storing coal uh, we are actually not uh, creating good wind fences so that they don't get resuspended, as it is happening in in case of uh, Goa shipyard. It happens in Mumbai shipyard where a lot of a uh, lot lot of these materials are going in, out in the atmosphere because we have not been able to do this even fencing properly. So there is a need to do chemical and physical methods, and and there is a need to make them bigger, scaled up. Uh, right now, we are only doing tarpaulin cover and then uh, maximum uh, water spray. And you can't spray water on everything. Next. This I already showed you, uh, which was done uh, in Anand Vihar area using uh, magnesium chloride based material. And uh, this suspension uh, control actually worked very well in this case. Next one. So when we talk about MSME uh, for brick kilns, we someone has uh, came out with this zigzag technology. Probably it has uh, improved from what it was being done, but whether it has been evaluated, whether it's efficient, and if it is, how efficient it is, or can we do anything more? There a lot of work. So most of the time, the researchers as well as um, uh, those in control of it. Uh, they consider these problems as smaller problems and not much of research is done and not much of scaling up is done. So it is very important that for MSMEs in, in our country, particularly ceramic industry, small textile industry, pulp and paper and paralysis industries, we need to do uh, scale up in terms of numbers and also bring technology which are cheaper to operate and maintain. Next. Similarly, for stubble burning, now there are a lot of uh, lot of examples which have come in. So we don't need too much of knowledge now, but to see how it can be implemented. So there are a lot of options which have come in, whether we can make paper, we can make pellet, uh, we can uh, do industrial fuel, we can do composting, uh, you know, all those kind of things which are there. Now, uh, can we go to next? There are there are options to, uh, when I was looking at literature, there are more than almost uh, uh, 200 papers in just last three years, which is talking about how to do cow dung or, uh, you know, all these bituminous coal related co-gasification or individual gasification or making something out of that uh, whole process. So it's important that why are we not using these science which is available to solve the real problem? Uh, Indian Indian cities are surrounded by villages. We have very high quantity of cow dung which is available, and actually it can be used. 
If we don't use it, they will be openly burnt and we will have air pollution problems. Next. I was actually surprised to see on Alibaba.com cow dung gasifier, even a higher scale, bigger scale are also available at a cost. Of course, these are appearing to be uh, expensive, but I'm sure if it is based on the knowledge that is there in place, we can get these units uh, functional at a much lower cost. Next one. For rice husk, a rice straw, IKEA has come out and it has already introduced in India uh, some of the products uh, which, which is being made out of rice husk. But yes, it is not it is not in a position right now to do everything and almost every every uh, part of rice uh, straw is picked up and it is converted. But yes, it is actually is telling us that it is a possibility that we can convert some of these into products and they can actually be uh, used at a cost. So right now the transportation cost alone makes people uh, worry about it and therefore they start burning. But if they can get something out of it, chances are that this burning can actually be converted into making money. And I think some something has been started more and more uh, set of people should come in and start doing something unique in this direction. Next. So when we're looking at, uh, you know, some of the examples that I was uh, sharing here, uh, when we look at air quality management plan urban scale, uh, we, we are doing all of these. We are doing air monitoring, we are doing source apportionment, we are doing source activity. But what has happened over a period of time is, that while doing source apportionment, we do gross source apportionment. We say so resuspended dust so much percent. That's not good enough for decision makers to take action. What we need to say is resuspension of dust of this variety from this location, and it is because of uh, either construction or it is because of road resuspension or it is something which has which was suddenly accidental lying over there and it went into the atmosphere. The source apportionment has to become more granulated. Uh, the, the, the numbers which are being thrown by a certain uh, group of people and researchers are actually not, help, uh, not helping public, uh, uh, public decision makers in that sense. So while we, we are doing this, these are the things which are still missing. Uh, more and more public participation, cost benefit analysis of each of the action. And then for this benefit, how much health benefit has happened? that also must come in. Otherwise, uh, we are not sending the right message in the right direction. Next one. So this is uh, the same thing in a little uh, explained way. Uh, what is important here is that uh, we need to do grid level study. So we can do a small grid and, and then take each of the strategies and then count our chickens in terms of saying, for, for the grid of five by five kilometer, I have reduced the suspension dust so much, crematorium emission so much, uh, you know, uh, uh, biomass burning quantity so much. Only when we do that, uh, we will be able to do large scale uh, city level control. Uh, right now, all our decisions are very grossly done and therefore we don't see the benefit coming in. Next. So uh, uh, these, these are my last uh, slides. So here, what is important here is to introduce local air quality management plan and which, which is learning from elsewhere as well as the way we have learned in our own country as well, that we, we start defining certain areas that how do we certain areas can be our clean air zones. There could be some areas which can be designated low emission zones. Uh, if there are areas where we know a lot of congestion is happening, we start doing congestion charging. Um, how high occupancy or bus lanes uh, can, can be designated, walking and cycling schemes. So all of these together uh, will make things happen. Uh, it will not only happen when we change the fuel quality uh, technology of vehicles and technology of uh, you know, combustion in certain industries. So we need all of these things together integrated so that when we talk about national air quality standards, uh, we, in, we integrate these together. And, and, and when we integrate, then local authorities will also know what actions to be done. So right now, local authorities are at loss. 
so when ncap funds are coming they are basically buying uh, road cleaning machines and and uh, in some cases just installing more monitoring stations in that case so what is important here is that we do time based action in each of these category do consultation uh, and when when we have we, we say consultation not only only with few professors and few scientists and you know few people who know but the public as well who actually see it coming that is actually benefiting them or not so consultation with general public is very very important important and then involve people from the local authority and inside of the locality or local authority as well because that is where you can actually do so called conversation where things move or things improve or not next uh these were the same slides which i showed you in the beginning uh basically to say that if we want to look at baseline we need to revise our standards accordingly uh but that we will discuss it later i was more on the technology side next i think we have done so thank you very much uh, uh, for having me and i can take some questions as far as possible uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rakesh Kumar, for a wonderful uh, talk. Uh, it was a comprehensive, uh, uh, covering uh, various issues uh, which uh, the many cities are facing. Uh, and you have given a complete uh, spectrum of uh, starting with the sources which contributes pollution and also give the various engineering solutions that may also get benefited. So there are several questions which has come up uh, in the uh, chat box. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly... Uh, no, uh, maybe if it is possible, you can read. Otherwise, I'll just uh, uh, highlight some of them. Maybe uh, this way in the uh, one of the question they talked uh, in uh, Karnataka. They say again, it's uh, I'm sure that uh, when we talk about, we should be very clear about. Uh, uh, you now each city will have the contribution varies. So here they talk about the, in Karnataka there are some 42 percent of uh, air pollution is from vehicles. Uh, is there any uh, suggestion for reducing? Uh, such an, a large contribution. So actually, uh, uh, I think one of the challenge of air pollution is also how do you communicate data? So when commissioner is saying 42% of uh, air pollution is from vehicles, I don't know how that percent is calculated. So I would say uh, someone uh, from this CIFA group or anyone can help help them actually understand these numbers. Because these numbers are very grossly exaggerated in few cases, and it's unfortunate that um, these numbers are used for decision making. And I'm sure in Karnataka, 42% of air pollution cannot come by transport. Yes, right? there, that's, that's my gut feeling. Uh, but yes, one needs to go more in detail, and then one can answer this question. Yeah. So the other question, this one from an young researcher, is to, is mentioning about uh, electric vehicles. Is is it justified to you know, to reduce air pollution because uh, for uh, energy requirement, uh, they again uh, largely depends on uh, non renewable energies. So uh, maybe you can advise them because it may help them. Yeah, so uh, from the from the point of view of energy uh, uh, conservation point of view or even normal energy management point of view, electric vehicles are not efficient in the sense that you burn uh, some some fuel somewhere and then you convert so the losses in energy by the time you get to the battery and in the vehicle is not very efficient process uh, but what is important here is that uh, our air pollution exposure in cities are higher because of population density is higher in the city so in a localized fashion if you have more electric vehicles uh, you are able to reduce the number uh, in terms of concentration which people will get exposed to so that way it makes sense but if you say we should have electric vehicles in a remote village where there's nothing, I don't think you get a benefit in, in that sense. Yeah. yeah. So there's another question. Uh, uh, you know, in many cities, the resuspended dust contribution is significant. It can vary from uh, you know 20 to 30 percent. So although there are several technologies uh, are existing, so is there any uh, technology that uh, says a uh, very efficient effective in addressing this uh, resuspended dust uh, as you saw uh, in, in my presentation also uh, resuspension dust uh, control 
at at a construction site where you are digging right is is a different uh, method of controlling but when you are sweeping and resuspension is happening that's a different set of technology which is required for for controlling it so each of these resuspension although we bracket them in one category uh, they require different method of controlling it so uh, I, I tell you, I just the way I was giving you example, the way we store our cement, uh, sand, and uh, say dust, uh, say say soil, in during construction period, uh, each of these will actually require a different dust control measures, met method. We cannot use the same method. So uh, for example, in in uh, mining areas, uh, it is it is uh, done in uh, some states in the US and Australia as well that the wagon when that is filled with coal the wagon is spread on the top with magnesium chloride layer the moment it goes out because it's it's uh, hygroscopic and uh, depending upon the transportation time it may it maintains that the dust from the the coal is not coming out so that's a different method so it's, it's that's why i'm saying uh, in india still we do not have except one or two that i know uh, we do not see many, many companies, private sector company, which is saying I'll control dust for you. But if you go to any of the other countries, you will find at least more than 200 companies which are specifically trained and they have all kind of uh, methods available, which, which, are, which, are, which, are, which are there only for dust control. So we should, we should wish away this whole method of covering tarpaulin and spraying water to control dust. We need to move one stop one step higher to do that. And we need to spend money for that because it's contributing almost 40 to 50% of uh, our visual air emission that we see. Okay. So as in the same line, I think uh, this important point you've just mentioned, the person who like, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the activities which contributes, uh, you know, resuspended dust or uh, dust pollution, uh, should we identify which source is contributing and the correspondingly should we determine how much environmental tax they have to pay in order to improve that one? This is a question from a, one of the <laughs> researchers. <laughs> That's a very, very interesting uh, proposition and I, I would really welcome it. i tell you why. Uh, if, if you take road making, uh, you know, technologies, when the road repairing happens, the L1, the so-called lowest cost, the way government gives tender, it goes to a fellow who does all kind of nonsense in terms of air pollution, but he becomes L1. So if a parameter of air pollution is introduced, obviously that L1 will go away and you will, you will see, you know, some better techniques and tools will come in. So I may not call it environmental tax, but if I consider environmental parameter for my road construction, there are chances that I'll be able to get better methods and better people to do the job. So this is another question, uh, which talks about involving a medical fraternity uh, to understand uh, the different types of pollutants that contribute in different areas and how atmosphere uh, plays a role in quantifying uh, and their uh, influence on the health. Uh, do you have any comments on that? This is 200% true uh, that uh, we have by design all the people from environmental science and engineering have avoided all the doctors. So we need to have doctors and uh, people, medical practitioners to work with us. Uh, since 2011, uh, we have been holding a uh, green health conference in Mumbai and sometime in other cities as well, where we deliberately try to get medical professionals to come and talk to us. And, and they were also very happy to interact with us because they, they could get a sense of what we are saying. And similarly, we also need to get sense of what they understand. So I think there is, there is a strong need of medical professionals to work with us. Then only we will complete the elephant. Otherwise, we are just touching the, I don't know which leg. <laughs> okay. The other, you know, I, I was expecting this question and probably you might be also guessing what is the question could be. So somebody mm -hmm. talked about this uh, smart tower. So uh, uh, how uh, you know uh, it has been installed in uh, Delhi. So uh, do you uh, think it definitely will going to address air pollution problem in Delhi? <laughs> <laughs> so smart tower from very beginning, I think almost everyone uh, knew that it will not solve the problem. Um, 
I, I don't remember the number exactly, but we had done a very rough back of the envelope calculation. Uh, we said that if we need about 40 to 50 percent of reduction in air pollution in the peak hour of Delhi, uh, we will need 2000 plus smog towers. So you can imagine Delhi having so many smog towers all around. So I, I, I don't think that's that's the solution that we are looking at. Uh, it, it it is. From the from the point of view of understanding hotspot areas, some certain locations which are which are having chances of uh, very high emissions, I will actually hate to even call it smog tower. Uh, we should be calling it uh, you know giant purifier, you know um, you know some kind of uh, purifier for hotspot cleaning, uh, not not for the city cleaning. No way. So there is an uh, other interesting question, which uh, you know, trying to bring out: How do we uh, India should move towards in engaging the community? Because we are lacking that, uh, as you uh, rightly mentioned in your uh, presentation, we we are not engaging the community and addressing the air pollution problem. So, what's your suggestion and comments on how to engage a local community to address this, uh, you know, air pollution problem? So th this is a question even I want an answer, frankly speaking. <laughs> uh, so so for example, we have a community like you and me and you know those who have those who are attending today, they can they can communicate what what we want to communicate. There is set of public also which is which knows that things are not good and it is it needs to be done, and probably government also wants to do it. But I think bringing these three together, I don't know who should be doing it. Someone who has a skill of getting people together uh, are, are the people needed. Uh, so I'm not actually sure how the engagement should happen. So in my own experience, I see that in some locations, engagement is very good. Some other places very disjointed. So this is, this is an area where we need to talk to some social scientists as well. Why this? Um, you know, gap in understanding which is happening. And I, I think I should also caution it here that many in our community from air pollution research community are are, are becoming, uh, you know, scaremongers. They, they frighten people by giving some numbers here and there. We need to be saying something which is rationally right. So, you know, we should say air pollution is a problem, following things happen. But if you start saying that, you know, people are dying, this will happen to you, that will happen to you. You know, the engagement becomes very scary. The confidence level has to be built slowly. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I, I think we have more jobs. We we need to say if there is a problem, it can be solved. There is a technology, there are processes which are possible to do. And we here are the set of people we need to talk to. I think that's the way uh, communication should happen. Yeah, I think it is in the same line, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Anil also uh, indicated uh, so, what's your views on the role of citizens and the social media in achieving the goals? <laughs> yeah, so social media is doing a good job in terms of uh, talking about it, you know, preparing that agenda. I think political pressure has become uh, very, very powerful, uh, but social media also takes it in some extreme direction at times. So, we need to be, you know, careful about it. So, if you see some of the Delhi uh, Twitter, uh, fights on air pollution. Uh, it is it is not fight between social media and concerns, but it looks like two political parties are fighting with each other. So we don't want that kind of situation to arise. So there is a very interesting question from Professor uh, Margaret Bell. Uh, I mean, she has a vast experience, uh, you know, working with uh, various uh, committees and uh, government agencies. Uh, I, I mean, she, she would have understand various issues in various angles and various uh, stages. So our question is, there are so many engineering solutions. Should we not be addressing public behavior, shift to the public transport, and then uh, you know, training professional to understand the issues and give them a ownership of taking action and adapting the methods and measures uh, uh, you have so, uh, which you have indicated. So, you know, it's a very interesting, uh, I mean, that shows the, you know, kind of things which society need to be adapted. Yeah, I, I fully agree with, uh, uh, you know, Professor Bell. Uh, I think once we had also discussed it, that we do create particularly on-road behavior. We do create a lot of uh, physical infrastructure like roads and pavements and 
uh, you know, signals, but we have not created social infrastructure for people to understand how how you need to use the same road or pavement or 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 the or the way uh, traffic has to move in certain way. So there's a whole lot of work which is which is required to be done. And I feel that besides the medical professional, we also need social uh, scientists to come in this discourse so that we are able to communicate what we mean. Behavior plays a big role in, in this whole thing. I agree with the person. I mean, sir, this is another question which uh, one of them indicates uh, the pollution characteristics are changing over a period of time. Now there are new emerging pollutants are also contributing and uh, many pollutants interactions also you know, leading to some uh, newer uh, issues. Uh, how do we address this? Uh, is, how do we uh, look at these uh, issues? Uh, whether uh, do we say is it uh, more safe or what will happen in the future? So, I mean, what what's your uh, your your thought on this uh, aspect, sir? So, so from from the point of view of research and PhD topic, I was, I would say these emerging pollutants we should definitely study. So all mm -hmm. all professors together and students teacher we should be there, but when we are when we are dealing with right now in current situation, uh, we should be addressing some of the bigger problems first, and and then go one by one. Uh, I'm not saying that we should not be. A lot of people ask me this question: Why are we not talking about PM point one and PM one? Why are we not talking about particle size of the PM? Right, rightly so. All those are important, uh, but. Till we have sorted out, uh, you know, PM10 and PM50. Uh, although our standard is PM10, I'm seeing even PM50 is not dealt with right now. So let's do that part of it. And as a scientific community, we should be doing all of these other things as well. They are important. We should be worried about it. Yeah. So this one last uh, maybe. Uh, uh, shall we take uh, one or two more questions? Is okay uh, to you? No yes. Okay. So this is uh, in Delhi. Many action plans are taken in to control air pollution during October, November months, but mm -hmm. uh, Grab uh, is still uh, uh, is not addressing it. Uh, are very not very successful uh, uh, to address this particularly uh, uh, more severe uh, uh, situation or air pollution situation. Do, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, I have. I have comments and. And my my comment may offend some uh, my own colleagues and friends, <laughs> uh, but you know uh, by by way of design of Grab itself, it was designed to fail. Okay, and why mm -hmm. I'm saying that is uh, Grab said I'll just take one example that when your AQI crosses this, you will ban construction. Right, so it means uh, you. In the, in the background, to me, it appears that I understand construction is contributing to about 40% or 30%. So when I ban, my 30% reduction will happen or 40% reduction will happen. When it crosses this, I'll ban this. So I, I always felt as a public, everyone felt that, you know, when you ban this, reduction will happen. But the fact was, in the background, we did not know how much contribution comes from that particular sector. Mm -hmm. And that's why it did not succeed. So as, as a concept, it was right, but the background calculations were missing. So if we knew in construction, whether painting, painting contributes or digging contributes or uh, electrification, electricity related, uh, you know, interior contributes, uh, we would have uh, solved this problem. And that is yeah. where we need to do granulation more than this. Yes. I, I also uh, thinking in the same line, probably uh, there should be a policy to have only uh, particularly the excavation should plan during a particular time period and rest of the other things uh, should not, uh, you know, particularly the excavation should not happen during the winters, maybe you could, they could think in that line, maybe help. Uh, There's another I would, interesting I would question. Rather say, uh, 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 Shiva, I will, I will rather say, let's not use this ban. Yeah, no, no ban. I'm all, just all talking other, about... All, all other countries are banning all these activities in certain season, no. I think mm. it's the construction practices which need to be made right. I See, think that is correct. where we need to wait, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that one. Yeah, so there is another interesting question. Uh, these coastal cities like Mumbai, are they going to face a similar the landlock problem they, where Delhi is facing? Mumbai has already started facing this landlock situation because uh, there are certain areas, the way tall buildings have come up, urban canyon effect is being seen. The sea breeze is not helping out. It's not 
flushing the polluted air in those canyons. And in this 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 period last month, we saw many places in in Mumbai where uh, the the AQI index was as high as Delhi, which was not winter for them. So this this can happen, and that's why the advantage of taking sea breeze is is very very important while while doing our land use design and and related uh, activities of uh, road infrastructure and other things. Mm -hmm. There's one question, uh, uh, like you know, shifting to from the public transport, uh, uh, probably by uh, you know sometimes you you we all know that uh, some of the school uh, stagger their uh, uh, opening times, and also the uh, some of the offices are closing it at different times. So is it uh, you know uh, can it possible to broad these things in in policy making? Yes, uh, this this could be a good a good option. That we stagger office timing, we can stagger school timing. I think that's that's a good option. Yes, because in peak hour, that morning three hours peak, evening three four hours peak can be avoided. Yes. Okay, I'll take maybe another two questions because uh, you know questions are keep coming, and uh, I know getting your time is something which everybody <laughs> would like to no, 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 ask no, no, many problem. questions. Yeah. So this is uh, again from the one of the regulator who retired. So it uh, is uh, you know. Um, uh, this is a, another question which I also thought uh, maybe I'll just club these two things, which is I thought I'll also get an opportunity to ask some, you know, some clarification for my understanding. Uh, the road surfaces have changed over a period of time because earlier we used to have only bitumen, but now they are the the composition they are using it now. As a result, the you know the resuspended dust which is happening because of the abrasion the tire uh, characteristics, so whether this has changed. And then there are some aspects, they're also talking about this microplastics, uh, which is also being used, uh, are some aspect, I, I'm, I'm not sure about it. The microplastics presence in PM 2.5 uh, is also being reported. Is What is the source uh, uh, in this micro uh, uh, microplastics in the ambient PM 2.5? Uh, is it uh, you know possible to identify which source is contributing? So uh, I I will uh, I will assume that is there microplastic uh, possibly will be there in but I I have no idea in terms I have not done that research myself but it could be a good uh, topic for some students to work on uh, I guess uh, the the road surfaces are differently a uh, cause of of uh, certain uh, pm 2.5 which is coming out in atmosphere so some source of ocean study which has gone into the marker level actually shows that uh, uh, rubber and you know uh, related particles are more in those areas where you have concrete surfaces mm -hmm. compared to vitamin surfaces so yes uh, so that's that's definitely which is happening uh, but the numbers uh, because our, all our other numbers are so high that these numbers appear to be smaller Okay, so this is a question from uh, Dr. Anil again. Uh, what what we need is an integrated air quality management. Yes. So uh, and so my problem is like this. Uh, so in this forum, I can say Anil is also here. So we got uh, you know a commission for air quality in Delhi. Right? Who is heading it? So there the you know answer lies. You need someone who understands this integrated thing completely. So we cannot have uh, you know someone who is administratively looking at this problem. This is uh, this is this is a scientific problem, scientific, uh, scientific and legal problem first, understanding the law of regulation and related things. But science part is very very primary. So if we don't understand the problem properly. You cannot handle it administratively. You had IPCA, you had NGT, you had Supreme Court, everything. Everyone said something, something. Did you solve the problem? You didn't. So we we need a group of people who are equally inclined and they are not looking at hierarchy, but wanting to do certain things. So in integrated approach, we will need a, a technocrat to sit and, uh, and, and then you know combine strength with authorities to do certain things. So you cannot do part by part. Problem has become too big to handle now. Last question from my side. 
uh, what kind of electricity generation sources can switch uh, to short term reduce overall uh, impact on air pollution? <laughs> so, of course, we are all talking about renewables. Uh, we would all wish that renewables are in place. Uh, but looking at the way our renewables are, um, I don't think India will be able to meet that demand of reliability and, and also risk-free power supply. So India with very little of nuclear power will need to enhance its nuclear power capability uh, in terms of power supply, I'm saying, uh, not weapon. Uh, so that is what will uh, make our air quality problem uh, sorted in, in medium terms, not in long terms. Sir, thank you very much for the you know wonderful talk and also the clarifying several uh, questions uh, raised by the researcher and also some regulators. Uh, we will have one quick uh, uh, photo because uh, it's an opportunity. Although we are not taking in in presence now, but we'll we'll uh, uh, we'll we'll have a a photo of uh, this uh, online meeting. Uh, can you all uh, uh, start your camera so that we will just have a quick. Hi, Professor Bell. <laughs> nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> we have a rare event. We have some sun in Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Anil. Okay. So, can, can uh, uh, Gopika, uh, others, can I just uh, start it uh, so that we can quickly uh, take? So, yeah, so others can also uh, hope, uh, uh, yeah, just all, uh, uh, you know. Hi, Anil. Uh, Good to see you. Professor so, Karichat, can you just uh, start your camera? Okay. So uh, uh, just uh, maybe we'll take a quick photo. Uh, yeah. Everybody please smile. You're finished? Yes, sir. Done. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you very much, sir. Again, uh, from the on behalf of uh, SIPA for your time and a uh, wonderful talk. Now I'll request uh, uh, Dr. Madhusudan to, you know, summarize and. Uh... Yeah, well, many thanks uh, to 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 you all, and I am extremely sorry uh, that Siva asked me almost three four months back to speak, but I couldn't manage. Uh, but uh, great, great years. I'm sorry for missing all this time. No, no problem, sir. Like uh, uh, it was a uh, you know great uh, uh, you know honor for uh, SIPA network and in particular air quality research group across the globe uh, to uh, have your thoughts and knowledge uh, to you know particularly the anger research will uh, definitely be benefited by your talk. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Dr. Malsudan, could you please? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, today we have with us uh, an excellent presentation which invited uh, a lot of questions and answers. And uh, this is a part of our air quality management lecture series uh, 14 by Dr. Rakesh Kumar. Uh, uh, doctor has touched upon the root cause of air pollution by explaining the heterogeneity of the issues and its sources, the impact of lockdown, reduction in air quality, and uh, he also tried to correlate with the background concentration and emphasize the importance of uh, laying of new standards. A time series analysis of 20 years and the policy interventions were explained further. The control strategies adopted sector wise, its importance were further discussed. The importance of clean technology, the need of technological interventions in uh, MSMEs, uh, small scale sectors, resuspension of dust, 
etc. were discussed, the need of community support was emphasized as part of the regulatory part, bringing efficient, cost-effective, technologically sound, uh, uh, sound with this one. He concluded the discussion on air quality management plan, importance of gridwise inventory, gridwise source apportionment, and the need of uh, micro plans for the for the city. On behalf of uh, uh, SIPA network, IIT Madras, IIFM, we thank you for delivering the excellent technical and narrative uh, lecture. I also thank all participants who have asked the many questions. Uh, the participants include uh, CPCBNs, academicians, researchers, NGOs, and uh, students as part of uh, today's lecture. I also thank the team of SIPA and Professor Shivana Gedra for the continued support for conducting this uh, air quality management lecture series. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Okay. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye.